<sighs> so if you live in Nigeria, you already know that Nigeria is Nigerian. <laughs> Nigeria is doing the most at the moment with inflation and the prices of things going high every day. You go to the grocery store, I mean, I, I go to the grocery store every now and then, like, and a product you bought for 1,000 naira just last week has become 1,500 this week. It is crazy with food, with water, every, like every single thing, fam farm they want to kill us <laughs> but of course we're believers we are not moved by the economy of this world because let's be honest we are not if we were i don't know how we'll survive we just gotta be thankful to god for how well he sustains us but in this video we're going to be talking about what to do how to deal with Fina your finances in an inflation how to undo inflation generally what i'm what i think what i think works what we do in our house you know strategies that work and i think that this video will be helpful for anyone at all no matter where you are in any way in the world so if you're interested make sure to keep watching so if you're new here, I think I should do the introduction. If you're new here, my name is Fadeh Kemi. I'm a Christian lifestyle blogger and YouTuber from Lagos, Nigeria. I talk about finance, everything in between. Lifestyle, Christianity, all centered on God. Right? Right. <laughs> so let's talk about the topic of the day. If you are, if there's something that I can say that I know coming from my management, finance, accounting background, is that for a company to thrive in the business world, in the, you know, corporate world, the business, they are, to get their profit maximum, like, to get their profit maximization strategy goal, you know, on point, there are two strategies that actually work. Number one is cost effectiveness. And number two is to um, increase revenue, increase price right so you either reduce cost or you increase price those are the two ways right reduce cost increase price stay with me now on the first end of increasing price many businesses do this like apple and all these luxury good bands they create a perception in the minds of the user especially if it's a luxury good like they are creating this perception that you are different from the others when you buy the product or brand or service there's something about you that makes you special for buying that product just like what apple does with iphone macbook all of that because you hear android users tell us all the time oh we had that feature two years ago we had that feature one year ago right iphone users just keep buying iphone right iphone 13 iphone 12 iphone 14 no difference farm yet okay maybe there's long island or whatever that thing they call it what's that thing called long island something island remind me in the comment section <laughs> This is what luxury goods sell to us. They sell us the perception that, you know, we're better than others for using this particular product. And that's how they increase their price. So they have a very high profit margin. So what product businesses do in this um, price strategy is to create a niche for themselves. So they create something special about that product and then place high value on it. That's how to try it. If you want to go for the, you want to go the price route, right? You can't be selling like every other person, doing the same thing like every other person and expect that. You would get to that your profit maximization goal or you'll be a profitable company it won't work now on the cost effectiveness um angle the strategy for cost effectiveness is to minimize as much as possible the cost that you are using for your product so where other 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 competitors are getting products for maybe 200 naira, uh, that's their raw material or their you know purchases you will go and get the cheapest product that you can get as much as possible for say 100 naira. but in this case Please note that what we do is to ask, is to advise businesses to have an optimal per um, cost strategy, meaning the cheapest price, the cheapest cost at the highest quality. So we're not saying go for a very terrible quality just because you want to get things at a cheaper price so that you can have a profit margin that will be better than your competitors. But what you want to do is get things you know at the cheapest possible price you could get your own personal supplier in fact some people use the opportunity to even go into the supply chain right but yeah that's the two ways some other people you know cut staff cost administrative cost you know some people even say okay everybody work from home we don't need to buy generator we don't need to fill our generator buy diesel all of that because the price of diesel has also gone <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, those are the two strategies that really work. But inside those two strategies, there are now other strategies in between. Like for example, in the cost strategy, there's the discounts, getting discounts, getting rebates, all those things are inside it. Why did I say all of this? I'm sure someone's wondering what's going on. What was she saying? Why did I say all of this? As accountants, I find that many accountants are very you know, we, we have our corporate finance, our strategy, financial management sense, like everything. We understand these things, but we are not able to export it into our personal finance. Now, you can export the same strategy into your personal finance. So this means really that there are only two strategies to really up your game and to make the money that you're looking for. Right. Number one is to cut your cost. And number two is to raise your price and what many businesses actually do is to combine these two strategies together so get the optimal cost effective model and also create a niche for yourself you would benefit greatly so where others are saying there's a casting down you'll be saying what yep a lifting up <laughs> so what do i mean so on one end you must try your best as someone that is that, that finds their personal finance really important, you must try your best to ensure that you cut cost as much as possible. In an inflation, you don't need to be buying things that you do not need. And everybody knows the things that they don't need. But we still indulge. And yes, I know, sometimes when you get salary, in your mind, you're like, see, let me just buy the shower. I have worked for it. Yeah, all those ones are allowed. I mean, you can't kill yourself. <laughs> but... There are some things that you should not be buying, like that Ashore B, that shoe, that bag. You don't need to buy it if you don't really need to buy it, right? You can always say, oh, I'm sorry, I won't be able to buy it now. Especially if the person is giving you in a short notice and you're not able to save up for it. There's no need to keep up appearances. I can't afford it. It's as simple as that. You know, I've learned, I actually learned as a person that there's nothing that is too expensive. You, you just can't afford it, baby. <laughs> So I don't know why, as a person, you don't have a budget in this Nigeria inflation. I was speaking to someone recently, and the person was telling me how he just, you know, spends. He doesn't really know how much goes into what. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Not like I'm the perfect person with my finances, but I know what goes into what, right? So yeah, there might be overspending sometimes, but everything, like some people just say, okay, I've earned, I've collected 500k this month. Let me just send. 20, 30k to one to one saving account then the remaining for 70k they lavishly spend it like they they just spend it no no you may be under saving there's such a thing as under saving if you are not saving according to what you're earning so someone is earning 200 they're able to save 100 and you are earning 500 you're saving 48 months even though it's not like you're using your expenses to build a house or do anything you're just spending that's not good enough. So yes, you find your way to cut costs. Go to the best places where you can get good prices. But remember, optimal prices, optimal cost effectiveness. That's the most important. Why am I hammering on this? As as we, I find that, and this happens to me a lot, with my shoes, I don't have this issue with my clothes because I have clothes I've worn four years, five years, and they are still intact. But you see that shoe thing? Especially my flat shoes, like they just keep spoiling because I keep buying shoes that are not optimal. Like I don't, I'm not getting the cheapest at the highest quality. So I'm buying cheaper shoes and then after like wearing it for like six months, the shoe will pack up. <laughs> so I'm realizing recently that I need to invest in buying quality flat shoes so that I know that, okay, one year, two years, the shoe is still standard. It's still okay. It's still working. My heels don't really have this problem, but you see that flat shoe. And so that's why it's important that you're buying good quality because in the long run, you're still doing yourself. And I know that if you don't have money, you don't have money. There's nothing you can do, but try your best to get, as long as you this thing is quality and you can get it at a very okay price, get it. You can get thrifted clothes, thrifted shoes. These things really help instead of going to buy all those you know our brothers, I don't want to mention their names, that make those clothes and shoes. And then after some a while, they will spoil. What's the point? Like two months, your, your slippers are spoiled. Two months, your shoe are spoiled. It's just somehow, right? So these are one of the ways to also make sure you're cutting costs. Get good quality products that will last you longer. It's better than buying things, like buying 3,000 naira shoe every time, every time. When you're going to just close your eye, buy a 15K shoe, and it will last you one year. Are you guys seeing it? 
these are the ways to survive in an inflation. Inflation is sometimes to start buying things the cheapest just because I said cut costs. There are other places you can cut costs, right? There are some things you can't cut costs in, like you want to go and buy rice. Rice will be rice. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> There's really nothing you can do about that. Now, on the price side, that's the second strategy, raising of prices. I don't know, but if you are in Nigeria, you don't know that you need another stream of income. You are on a long term, okay? You need to start thinking about ways to make more money. No matter how much you're making, it's never enough. Even in my family, I'm like, we are all, I'm always like, we need to make money. So for example, if you're on YouTube, yeah, you're making money from YouTube. Do you know how much you'll be making? If you're making maybe $100, even if it's $100 a month, that one will help you do something. If you want to live luxurious life, and you don't want to do anything illegal, right? We all know that they rise, there's been a rise of illegal things because people want the fine things of life, but the opportunity to get that fine thing of life is very, very small for a set of people. And of course, some people are lazy. There are other factors, right? But yeah, because people want the, the fine things of life, it is hard for them to get their hard thing, fine things of life. So they have to go the illegal route. When, when I see people on Instagram who go for vacation three times a year, I'm always like, how much is your salary, please? <laughs> like, people have money in this life, oh. Because do you know how much it, like, do you, re, do you know how much it means to gather funds together, gather one million, take you and your family? That's like three million that is gone on just vacation, right? So if you're not earning a certain amount a month, how are you going to afford that? So, my dear, you see why you need more money. <laughs> so, at this stage in this life, you have to be looking for other ways to make money. And I have a video that I did about it on other streams of income for side hustles. I think you should check it out. I did it on my other finance channel. But I've now inculcated all my finance content, everything into this channel. Because I find it really stressful um, doing all the channels together. But yeah, I think that that would really help in terms of that. Now, another strategy that works with the, the price strategy is to invest but investing is for the long run to be very honest i don't think it's something that you should put you, i i see investing like especially investing in like stocks as a long term thing but investing in short term things like piggy vests all these things they will help you but my dear pro tip invest with the holy spirit because the way nigerian investment things are breaking the other day i heard that one particular brand couldn't pay people back it's an agricultural um, investment platform. I was just like, oh, more. <laughs> and people have told me about that. Like, I almost was going to put my money one time. So, in this stage that we are in now, anything can crash. Even the soap here called Piggy Vest. In my mind, I've already told myself that if Piggy Vest crash, I will not die. <laughs> but it will not crash in Jesus' name. <laughs> but yeah, so just invest with your spirit, your intuition whatever it is you believe in but yeah so that's that now other small small tips that can also help buying in bulk if you buy in bulk you'll be saving so much buy in bulk um but also buying in bulk is also dependent on other factors for example if you want to buy in bulk chicken fish i may not totally advise on that because you need a freezer and if you have a freezer if you don't have constant lights and in fact, you might have constant lights in your house and it's the day you go and buy chicken that Nepal will decide or PSN or whatever name they're called. <laughs> That's the time they will decide to take the lights. So you need to have a generator on standby that you know that will work for your freezer. So that one is a more... So me, I'm not really a fan of buying chicken, fish, all these things inside the freezer. I'm not a fan. But when it comes to like buying bag of rice, yam, semo, things that are not... that will not spoil the durable ones, by all means, buy them in bulk. It will save you more money. Because today, if you buy everything in bulk now, by next week, the price might have gone up. At least you would have saved up that one the, till the next buy again. It really, really will help you. Make a good buying decision when you're buying things. For example, you want to buy something of 70 ml. Check. 70 ml, 50 ml. Which one is more, you know? And sometimes you can cut some things that you buy. For example, you were buying Milo before and now over tin is cheaper. Buy over tin. <laughs> Except like your taste bud really, really like Milo. <laughs> So yeah, I think that that would also help. Overall, I think that budgeting and sticking to your budget and cutting out unnecessary costs is really the solution in this generation and also looking for other streams of income because I don't know, man. I don't know. But what are your thoughts, guys? Leave a comment in the comment section. I want to know your thoughts. I want to know what you guys think about this topic. If you want more topics like this, 
comment section is open tell me about it and i will see you in my next video remember to subscribe like like is giving this video a thumbs up subscribing is free and share to someone that you know will need this video bye guys